Welcome to online tutor training at Grand Rapids Community College. As you learned in the live training sessions, tutors at GRCC are professional and student leaders. As leaders, you model appropriate student behaviors for others on campus. Your behavior within the context of tutoring, as well as within daily interactions on campus, must meet a high ethical standard. This training is intended to get you started in the right direction. For this online training, there are three main objectives. First, we will define ethics. This gives us a common understanding from which we can discuss ethical situations we may encounter in a tutorial setting. And finally, we will take a look at some tutorial scenarios. By considering these situations now, you will be more prepared if they arise in the future. What do we mean by ethics? Because it is a term used frequently in a variety of circumstances, we might all have a slightly different idea of what the term means. Ethics can be considered the principles of acceptable conduct. They guide us in developing rules and standards which result in generally accepted behaviors. We will need to narrow our scope to define ethics within the tutoring experience, but before we do, let's talk a little bit about the implications of this definition. There are three things we'd like you to keep in mind. First, our goal in exploring ethics is to provide our students with the best possible tutoring experience. Second, while we develop rules for tutoring, these rules are based on principles that should make up the cornerstone of our thinking. Our principles are the spirit of these rules. We are not going to provide you with a rule for every possible situation. Rather, the principles we discuss will provide guidance for all your tutoring experiences. You may not run into many situations you would consider as being an ethical issue. But when you do, it is vital that you handle them appropriately. Arming yourself with best practices and thinking about situations beforehand allows you to make better decisions in the heat of the moment. You might be asking yourself, so if I'm not going to encounter ethical issues very often as a tutor, why do we have an entire training session around the issue? By behaving ethically, we see many benefits. First, it allows us to build strong and trusting relationships with our students. Students will know what to expect from us, and when we meet that expectation, we begin to develop trust, a key to good tutoring. But that relationship we develop may also promote certain student behaviors which, while we may not view them as major ethical dilemmas, actually do need to be addressed. For example, your comfort level with a 2T may lead you to offer more help than might be wise on a graded assignment. It is not easy to say, I'm sorry, I can't help you on this. As you work with students, you will find daily interactions often contain a component of an ethical issue which you will need to consider. Is this a graded assignment? Has the student shared personal information? Can others overhear you talking about that personal stuff? This also leads us to our second point, the need to establish appropriate professional boundaries. Boundaries can make the student feel more comfortable with the tutorial setting, and it may also help prevent potential interpersonal problems. While tutoring, it is necessary to maintain a professional student relationship. Even though some of you are a peer tutor, in your role as a tutor, you are an authority figure. You are not your tutee's friend. Tutoring a friend can cause a multitude of problems. You may have a harder time saying no when appropriate. You may unknowingly show favoritism to one tutee over another. And finally, personal relationships often have their ups and downs. How will the downs affect the tutoring process? Acting ethically helps maintain both your personal integrity as well as the integrity of the tutoring program. There are three basic principles that we as tutors base our behavior on. One, tutors shall honor their responsibility to recognize and respect the student and their personal differences. Two, tutors shall honor their responsibilities to hold paramount the academic success and independence of the student. And three, Tutors shall honor their responsibility to achieve and maintain the highest level of professional competence. We use these principles to help us develop some basic rules to follow while tutoring, but more importantly, we use them to help guide our thinking when we encounter a situation with a student where there might not be a rule. For now, we'll break down each principle and look at some basic guidelines of behavior that emerge from each, and then see if we can apply the principles and rules to real-life situations. We want all tutors to recognize and respect the student and their personal differences. We all have an intuitive understanding that being a successful tutor is based on mutual respect and understanding. Here is a list of basic rules to help guide you in developing respectful relationships with your students. 1. Give the student your full attention. 
It's not only disrespectful to be doing something else when you're tutoring, but you just can't be a good tutor if you don't pay attention. Listen carefully and don't be afraid to ask questions if you need to clarify a point. 2. Use appropriate language. Pick your words carefully. If you use the wrong word, you A. won't be able to get your meaning across and B. could inadvertently insult your 2T. 3. Don't be judgmental. This means not only listening and trying to understand the student's point of view, but also not imposing your personal values or lifestyle onto the student. This is easier to do when you stay focused on the task at hand. 4. Strive for an open and honest relationship. Building trust encourages engagement in the tutorial process. Making mistakes then becomes part of the learning process rather than something to be ashamed of. Support your student in an honest and forthright fashion. This means you should encourage your student, but be realistic. And now that we've talked a little bit about the ethics in tutoring, pause and take a few minutes to respond to the following scenario. Your 2T has just come in for an appointment and expresses concern about failing a class. Her last test score was very low and she received an early alert notification. How do you best proceed with this session? You will need to write up your response and submit it to your supervisor for your personnel file. When you complete this assessment, continue on with the presentation. Our second principle states that we should hold paramount the academic success and independence of the student. Here are several rules that we follow. You need to know and understand the subject you're tutoring. If you don't know it, don't try to tutor it. Your students expect that you help them honestly. We're better off saying, I don't know, than misleading the student. Admit your weaknesses. It's okay if you don't know everything. It's not okay to pretend like you do. If needed, ask a colleague or your supervisor for help. Or, better yet, suggest a student visit with their instructor during office hours. By being honest about your skills and knowledge, you show the student it's okay not to know everything and, in the long run, develop the trust that is critical for a successful tutoring relationship. Work to show your students the relevance of what they are studying. If you're tutoring math, for example, show them how it relates to their other classes such as chemistry or physics. Learning can also be connected to the real world. In a classroom, instructors may try to connect the material to real-life examples. We should support that work by finding connections to the real world that a student can relate to. And that might be different for every student. This is especially effective when you get to know someone. It also helps to build independence as they begin to connect the dots to see the big picture. Never do your students' work. While we want our students to succeed, it must be on their own merit. Help them gain the skills they need to be able to do the work on their own. This means letting them try the work first. It also means pointing out study tips or organizational skills. As tutors, our job is to provide support and help 2Ts learn the material. We do not give answers, and we do not guarantee an A. There is a saying, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. The mission of this department is to empower students to become lifelong, independent learners. This is easier to accomplish if you work to build the student's self-confidence. Let the student do their own work, and then genuinely acknowledge when your 2T does something right. We can all tell when someone is patronizing us, and no one likes it. By letting students do the work themselves, and offering praise when appropriate, self-confidence becomes a natural byproduct. This self-confidence can then lead to success which leads to greater self-confidence. A self-fulfilling prophecy begins. Now that we've talked a little bit about ethics and how it relates to academic success, pause and take a few minutes to respond to the following scenario. Your 2T has arrived for his appointment and tells you that he missed his last class. He has a take-home test to complete. He doesn't understand the material and he would like you to help him. How would you respond? You will need to write up your response and submit it to your supervisor for your personnel file. When you complete this assessment, continue on with the presentation. Our third and final principle centers on professionalism. As tutors, we want to achieve and maintain the highest level of competence. Here are three rules which help us do that. Learn about best practices in tutoring. This training is a good start. But when you're done with this training, it's a good idea to keep up with changes in the field. Your supervisor can help you with this one, but the more you can do on your own, the better off you and your 2Ts will be. 
Learn from your students. Listen closely to your TT and act accordingly. They will tell you what works for them and what doesn't when it comes to tutoring. Because everyone learns differently, you'll likely discover some new strategies you can use with other students. Through time and experience, you can build an arsenal of methods to use as situations vary. In another training module, you learned about being a model employee. The points addressed in that presentation are all part of being a professional. Come to work on time, do your paperwork, and during slow times, look for other things to do. This could mean reading ahead, expanding your knowledge base, working on supplemental materials for your supervisor, or maybe even cleaning. In essence, be a role model for those around you. Take a few minutes to respond to this final scenario. You have clarified material for your 2T using a detailed diagram. The student continues to seem confused and expresses frustration. How will you proceed with this tutoring session? You will need to write up your response and submit it to your supervisor for your personnel file. When you complete this assessment, continue on with the presentation. Let's briefly review the principles. First, honor your responsibility to recognize and respect your student and their personal differences. We are all different. Accept it. Respect it. Learn from it. Second, honor your responsibility to make the student's academic success and independence your top priority. Remember, our goal is to help our 2Ts become the best students possible. This means everything from not doing their work for them to helping them learn how to study. Making the student's success our top priority is the essence of good tutoring. And finally, work to achieve and maintain the highest level of professional competence. Show up on time, work hard, be thoughtful, and most of all, learn. Being a good tutor means that you should always be learning in order to improve your skills both as a student and a tutor. Professional behavior means learning at all times. To summarize, by behaving in accordance with the principles and subsequent rules presented here, we hope you will maintain professional, ethical tutoring practices. If you are faced with a difficult decision, you will have a framework with which to consider the problem. By working to adhere to these principles, you will be able to figure out most of the issues you face as a tutor. Finally, keep in mind that you are not alone. We are all in this together. You can rely on your fellow tutors and your supervisor when you need help. We hope this training has been useful and somewhat interesting for you. Be sure to turn in your responses to the scenarios presented throughout this training module. Thank you for your time and attention.